So let's kind of jump into it and maybe let's start with the NAR lawsuit and talk specifically about what it actually is, because there's a lot of misinformation about what the suit is actually about. Right. And so maybe we can talk through exactly what the suit's about and then maybe how that changes the landscape of uh, real estate. Yes, I mentioned this before and you know, we've, we had the benefit of opening LPT after the suits were filed. You know, these suits were filed back in 2019. We were aware of them. We were aware of the allegations in them. We were aware of some of the missteps that the large franchisers made that made them a bigger target for this type of litigation. And I've mentioned this before, but the, the headlines really dug in on this idea of you know banning buyer's agent commission. And that that is actually nowhere in the lawsuit. Um, that's nowhere in any of the settlements that happened. If you look back at what actually happened, you know, anywhere in Remax, both settled. And as a part of that settlement, they had to pay a bunch of money, but also then commit to you know, five or six changes they were gonna make to their business practices. No change in there says they're going to ban buyer's agent commission. This became the clickbait headline because I think people understood in the media and maybe at NAR that this was how they could get the agents riled up. You, know, you threaten the idea that buyer's agent commission is going to be banned, you create a lot of fear, and then that would rally the base. But at the end of the day, they just didn't wanna write the big checks. And now it looks like with the loss that there is going to be a very large check written by the three defendants who did not settle. But you know, we, we've read the case and, and what the case actually says, and it's hard for us being in the industry to really see this because we're too close to it, but I want you to try to take yourself out and think of yourself as a third party, just a, a layman, a regular consumer who's on the jury, who is not part of the real estate industry. And the allegation that was made is that NAR and these very large franchise companies, uh, Anywhere, Remax, um, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, and Keller, colluded to fix prices in real estate commissions. And the agreement that the lawsuit alleges happened was that NAR said, hey, big brokerages, if you agree to make all of your hundreds of thousands of agents join NAR as a mandatory part of being in your franchise, which will then give us NAR a lot more dues, we will in return make buyer's agent commission mandatory so that you can help keep prices inflated. And that, that is the accusation. Like that was the whole basis mm -hmm. of the lawsuit was that NAR and these big franchises came together and said, hey, we'll require all of our hundreds of thousands of agents to join NAR. In return, NAR, we need you to require everyone to offer a unilateral mandatory offer of buyer's agent compensation and that that effectively had the, that was effectively price fixing to keep commissions high. And then where our industry did not do itself any favors is, so that's the allegation. And now you get into well, what's the evidence. And unfortunately, the way a lot of brokerages and agents talk about commission, it makes it seem as if there is a standard rate, as if they are not negotiable, as if there is some collusion across the industry. And so then they played videos of training events and scripts and all these things from the franchises saying things like, well, if you're going to go below the standard commission, you need to get manager approval. Well, why is there a standard commission? Is there some price fixing? And so when the jury looked at all this, what they found them guilty of or, you know, of, of liable for was that there was this agreement that said, hey, NAR is going to help us inflate commissions by making buyer's agent commission mandatory in return for making all of the agents members of NAR so NAR can make more dues. Now, again, we don't see it that way because we're too close to it in the industry. But I can understand how a jury would see that, especially when you have these scripts and overcoming objections and sales training videos that all do make it sound like there is, in fact, some type of fixed price. And, you know, I'm a firm believer that commissions are negotiable. It's a big part of why I built listing power tools to give agents the ability to go in there and negotiate the best commission they could by showing maximum value. We'll talk about that more in a minute. But one of the things I want you to think about is as you're out in the community, as you're talking to sellers, as you're talking to other agents, are statements you are making, could they be misconstrued to make it seem like this conspiracy does exist? And, and that's something I've really tried to do a good job of over the last you know, three or four years since the lawsuit was filed is when I talk about things, am I talking about it in a way that someone who is not part of the real estate industry would think maybe there is some, some collusion, maybe there is some price fixing and saying things like they wanted me to reduce my standard commission. Well, if commissions are negotiable, is there necessarily a standard Stay, commission? Correct. Um, you know, I, setting commissions, I won't negotiate. Like phrases like this do not do well for our industry. You know, there, there were posts on Facebook, you see them all the time. What do you do when a seller asks you to lower your commission? I tell them to F off. I mean, it gets, it gets crazy, yeah. but none of that <laughs> looks great for our industry when there is this accusation of this agreement between the biggest brokerages 
and NAR to fix prices. And that, that's really the heart of this. And so I just want, I want everybody to think about that and be conscious of when you are discussing commissions, when you are discussing commissions with your clients, with, with all these people, keep in mind that there is no fixed price. There is no standard commission in real estate. That is not a thing. You know, there are average commissions, there are average levels, but at the end of the day, you are negotiating that commission with the seller when you go in there. That's really what the lawsuit was all about. Again, there's no language in there that says they're going to ban a buyer's agent commission. You know, they're going to potentially stop making it mandatory, but even that wasn't part of the anywhere in Remax settlements, Settlement, you know, correct. but that is a big part of what NAR was. So we don't know exactly what's coming, but again, the media has taken this to the far extreme of, oh, we're going to ban buyer's agents commissions. Buyer's agents are going to go away. Buyer's agents aren't going to exist anymore. Look, someone has to show all these houses. Correct. You know, the idea that if a consumer wants to see 10 houses, that 10 listing agents are going to show up and show them the 10 houses. And if they don't buy that house, it's just not practical. And so again, reading all the actual lawsuit language, reading the actual settlement language, you know, we do not feel like there is this massive wave coming where buyer's agent commission goes away. I don't see that. And, and, but we do have to be smarter as an industry about how we talk about commissions. And so some of the things we did at LPT, because again, we knew this was out there. We knew these lawsuits existed. Some things that we did to make us look very different from the companies who are a part of these lawsuits is one, you can be a part of LPT without being a member of NAR. We run a second brokerage uh, called Network Realty, where you do not have to be a NAR member. All right, now this is easier to do in some states than others. We are going to have it in all the 20 states we're expanding to, but it's usually a little slower to expand. But in Florida in particular, where our biggest agent base is, we actually have one of the largest non-NAR brokerages in the entire state called LPT Network Realty. All right. And that brokerage does not require you to be a member of NAR. So if we're looked at to say, hey, well, is LPT a part of this collusion? collusion well, correct. we didn't require it where the big franchises did. While some of the franchise owners may have had a second brokerage that didn't require NAR membership for like a referral network or whatever, they could not label that as a part of the franchises. The franchises literally did require everyone to be members of NAR, which looks terrible for them to a jury who's being told that there was this whole collusion. So at LPT, that's the first thing, agent choice. We have a choice for agents who do not want to be members of NAR. Now, you don't have MLS access, you don't have lockbox access. There are definitely technological limitations that make it harder to do your job, but anchoring an agent choice, we do have, I think it's five or 600 agents yep. who are not members of NAR, who are part of the LPT family through our network brokerages. And again, we're, we're adding those to all the states as we grow and expand. That's one. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, listing power tools. Like the idea that commissions are negotiable and that's why we arm you with amazing marketing to go out there and win and to show your value and to be able to, in a negotiable situation with a seller, you know, prove your value and prove the amount you want to charge in that negotiation by showing them listing power tools. That's a critical component of who we are. And again, I think this is actually on the other side where some of the other brokerages got in trouble. You know, there's this horrible script that floats around that says, oh, if someone challenges your commission, you're supposed to tell them that, well, a third of it goes to my brokerage and a third of it goes to my marketing. And then I only get a third of it as a way to like, well, but if that's a lie, if you're not actually going to put a third of it into marketing, which a lot of agents don't. Correct. If you're on a, a flat fee with your brokerage or you're capped with your brokerage and they're not taking a third of it, you're now lying to the consumer to inflate your commissions. This is not, this is not a good move in the light of all of this type of, 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 um, of litigation and things. But here at, listing, at LPT Realty, because of listing power tools, you do have a real value proposition to go in there and put you in the absolute best position to negotiate a fair commission for yourself because commissions are negotiable. There is no set rate by us. There's nothing in our documents at LPT that has a minimum commission amount. Certain brokerages have that language. We do not. There is no amount of commission that requires you to get manager approval or broker approval. A lot of brokerages have that. LPT does not. These are things that we learned from seeing uh, the, the allegations in this lawsuit. And so agent choice around NAR membership, mm -hmm. um, having the, the actual marketing tools to put you in the best possible position to go in there because we do believe commissions are negotiable and we don't have any policies that say otherwise are a couple of the critical factors that we are different, that make us look different here at LPT Realty than other legacy brokerages where maybe the language they used in itself was not illegal, but when you wrap it into the idea of the alleged conspiracy, all of a sudden it makes the jury believe maybe there was something, maybe Correct. where there's smoke, there's fire. 
like if you look, there are there are companies out there that list for flat rates. There are companies out there that list for much less. We have agents here that list for flat rates, and you know, again, the consumer is more aware of this than I think we give them credit for. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you know, if you are a Fisbo, you're getting a ton of direct mail from companies offering to list your home for a few hundred dollars or whatever. Like the idea that commissions aren't negotiable or that consumers were not aware that commissions were negotiable, while I somewhat understand it, I don't believe that it's this massive shift. That again, a lot of the fear mongering and clickbaiting is happening with the internet internet and and you know billboards and direct mail and all these things like we've seen companies come in and try to disrupt by offering lower prices and they've done a pretty good job of getting their message out in the end this is a very large transaction and i think what what i've seen and even from my personal experience consumers would rather have an expert with amazing marketing than a lower price yep. and that i think that is real and and so again we're here to not use gimmicks and tricks and scripts to, to set some artificial level of, of commission price fixing, we're here to give you the tools to provide absolute maximum value to that seller. So they say, yeah, I wanna hire that agent, even if they are more expensive than other agents in my area because of all the amazing marketing and tools and resources that they bring to help me win as a seller. And, and that's important. And you know that's an important part of who we are. I think it's a very important part of where real estate is going. That's right. Because I, I do think that the idea of just throwing the house in the MLS is going to get more pressure around you know what the what is a fair commission amount for that and so again we are here to give you the tools and to put you in the absolute best position to win in this changing market and again while we don't know exactly what it looks like what i can tell you is we are very focused at our level of being nimble and ready you know i think we're already in a great position as more information comes out if we need to put you all and us together in a better position we are the best suited brokerage to do that because we are nimble we are young we don't have the legacy problems which again is very similar to what i faced in the mortgage industry back in 2007. when i opened rp funding and maybe a year later dodd frank and the cfpb outlawed dual compensation for originators it was a massive shift in the mortgage business and we had to be ready to be nimble and adapt and adjust and at the time, there was very much this sky is falling, you know, mortgage brokers are going to go out of business, all this stuff. But if you look at today, mortgage brokers are the fastest growing segment of the entire industry. The sky didn't fall. Everyone adapted. Everyone figured it out. There were minor tweaks and changes that had to be made. And it's just something I'm really comfortable at leading a company through. Like I've been through it multiple times now, the mortgage industry, I went through it in soccer. We are going to now do it all together here at LPT Realty. And my commitment to you is that we are going to guide this ship through this storm in a way that is absolutely best for you all as our agents, because you come first. We are an agent-centric brokerage. That is the thing we are committed to above all else. And so we will make whatever changes are necessary to position all of you to win, because that's how we win as your brokerage in this market. That was the whole reason for us to transition listing power tools into LPT Realty is so that we can win when you win and empowering you to win. And we are very focused at the corporate level on watching and reading the actual lawsuits, talking to our actual legal teams, being prepared for this in advance, not just reading clickbait headlines or pontificating about what we think is coming. And I want all of you to feel comfortable and confident and trusting that we are handling that part of it so that you can do what's most important in your business, which is keep your head down and stay focused on serving your clients and building your business through what is a difficult time. Interest rates are high inventory is tight there's a lot of fear in the in the general economy right now and then you throw this on top of it you need to stay very focused on your business we're going into q4 which is going to be slower january is probably going to be a rough month for a lot of parts of the country i want you all to feel comfortable and confident in keeping your head down staying focused on your business do your best to ignore the headlines ignore the the clickbait facebook posts ignore the battles in the comments around what everyone thinks is going to happen from this and trust that at LPT Realty, we have your back and we are going to keep you informed right here every Monday morning and keep us all on that path to win together because you need to be focused on your business right now more than ever.